Welcome to part 4 of lecture 20 of aerospace propulsion. So we left off with this question of figuring out what is the, ch the Mach number needed to just choke a fan with bypass ratio or with fan pressure ratio 1.5. Well we know that the bypass nozzle chokes when the pressure ratio is 1.893. So if the fan pressure ratio is 1.5 then basically by taking that ratio we can get the peanut 2 over PA of 1.262 will just choke um, the nozzle. And we can set determine the no Mach number where that happens, and it's going to be about 0 0.58. So decently fast, right? So you know during takeoff and initial climb conditions, that nozzle is not not going to be choked. Not so you accelerated to getting close, pretty close to the cruise condition. Uh, is that effect going to come into play? So. Um, now we can sort of look at the non-dimensional uh, bypass mass flow. Uh, it basically, we use the same approach as in the core nozzle if it's unchoked. Um, but of course, uh, the choked non-dimensional mass flow is different because it's uh, air, not combustion products. Now, where things get really different is when we have to do our low pressure shaft power balance. Um, just like when we were looking on design, this is a fairly complicated expression. Um, and even though we're neglecting the mass flow rates of fuel and bleed air, um, and if we define the bypass ratio as m uh, dot in the bypass over m dot in the core, um, then we can rewrite the power balance in a way that we see sort of the things we know and the things we don't know. So T naught four over T naught two is our independent variable. T naught four five over T naught four is a constant; it's set by geometry. And then we have four unknowns: T naught five over T naught four five, the, the total temperature ratio of the a low pressure turbine, the bypass ratio, T naught one three over T naught two, which is the total temperature ratio across the fan, and T naught two three over T naught two, which is the total temperature ratio of the uh, flow in the core that goes through the fan plus the booster. There's one too many unknowns here for us to really be able to proceed, so we have to make some kind of plausible simplifying assumption. What we will assume is that the temperature rise for the core flow across the fan plus the booster together is proportional to the temperature rise for the bypass flow across just the fan. So in other words, T naught two three minus T naught two over T naught one three minus T naught two is a constant, which we'll call KT. This gives a simplified power balance where we now we only have three unknowns, um, which basically come down to be the, the fan pressure ratio, the bypass ratio, and the low pressure turbine total temperature ratio. So the way we can go about solving this is to um, first specify whatever new off-design T naught four over T naught two we want to uh, solve for. Then basically guess the new fan pressure ratio. What we know is that uh, if it's a higher T naught four over T naught two, the fan pressure ratio should be higher, and if it's lower, it should be less. Um, how much is not sort of well known a priori, so it's something that that's why it takes some iteration. So we guess a new fan pressure ratio and then compute the temperature rise across the booster. And then we get the overall pressure ratio and temperature ratio um, for the engine. Uh, we can then determine the core mass flow from consideration of the choked high pressure turbine inlet conditions. Uh, we can get the bypass mass flow and whether the nozzle is choked or not for the bypass. We can then compute the bypass ratio. Finally, we, er, then we use the low pressure power balance to get T naught or T naught four five, and thus the LPT pressure ratio, and we can basically com then compute the non-dimensional mass flow in the core propulsive nozzle, and re from that recalculate the core mass flow. If it doesn't agree with what we got at step three, then the fan pressure ratio we picked is wrong, and we have to sort of go back to step two and repeat. So that's it. Um, in the next lecture, the final one for the chapter, we'll uh, look at doing a, an example of this, um, and then we'll finally look at the sort of most complex case, which is that of a three-shaft engine.